can only hope they continue to do so. Elsewhere, Wales face Serbia, Northern Ireland host Luxembourg and Scotland play Macedonia. And Olympic double gold winner Mo Farah has joined traders in London for a charity day to raise money for good causes connected to 9-11. That's the latest. I'm Stuart Duggan. The Jazz FM Money Minute. Well, the country's trade deficit has narrowed, led by an increase in oil exports to the European Union. While shares in fashion house Burberry have slumped after the company issued a surprise profit warning. Our coverage with Alpari, financial spread betting on global markets. The Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors says house prices rose in London but dipped slightly across the UK. But the volume of sales is very low, with surveyors only selling on average 7.5% of the homes on their books. Spain's Prime Minister says he'll not accept outside conditions over a possible bailout. He made the pledge in his first television interview since taking office, but said no decision to request a bailout had been taken. And job applicants required with experience of working in or with a central bank or similar institution. Those interested should note that the position is the next governor of the Bank of England, which will be advertised for the first time later this week. Quiet day for the stock market with the FTSE down just one point at 5,792. I'm Johnny Hart. The Jazz FM Money Minute. Jazz Travels with Robbie Vincent on Jazz FM in partnership with Virgin Holidays Cruises where they can organize your travel to and from the airport in a chauffeur-driven car. Jazz FM, listening color.
Bobby Vincent, jazz travels. That means travel and good music, soul, blues, and plenty of jazz too. Now, over the last couple of weeks, we've been to the Montreux Jazz Festival with our guests Hamish Stewart and the Average White Band. We've had music from Dick Morrissey and Jim Mullen, produced by the Average White Band, and travelled to the wilds of Scotland and sampled the great food and sun in Sicily. We just heard Aretha Franklin, Until You Come Back to Me. There's a woman, if she sang a telephone directory, it will probably sell in millions. I wonder, Hamish, have you ever worked with Aretha? I sang on what she did, a remake of uh, What a Fool Believes, that Aretha wrote a great arrangement for, and I, I just had, like, one line of background vocal that I sang on it. It was great fun. And I sang with her live once. We, we all, uh, the spinners were doing a a show at the Greek Theatre in LA and they called us up at the end of the end of the show so I was, on, I was so intimidated on the same mic as Aretha <laughs> and I, well, I don't think anything came out of my mouth actually I was just kind of like oh it's her Jim your mate Jim Mullen tells this wonderful story uh, his hero was Doddy Hathaway oh yeah and he, sa- and he tells this wonderful story he said and then I met Donny Hathaway and I was <coughs> He said, I just couldn't speak. Yeah. He said, I felt such a banana. <laughs> I couldn't speak. It's, it's hard to believe there was a moment when Jim was speechless. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder if Aretha uh, had that sort of effect on you first speeches, because she, she was obviously a massive hero. Oh, you? absolutely. Uh, I remember when well, we were nominated for a Grammy for Pick Up the Pieces. And of course we didn't we didn't win, but we were there, and we went back to Reef's house after after the show. Uh, well, we were on the non telecast part, the dinner thing, and Aretha was performing on the live telecast. We went back to Reef's house, we watched it, and the party's going on. We're having a great time, you know. Well, we've, we've, you know we've been nominated for Grammy, all this kind of carry on. And all of a sudden, Aretha arrives with her entourage and sweeps into the room, and everybody's jaw was on the floor. You know, it was it was just one of those great moments. It was a great party. Would she be your number one hero? Um, did your or did your jaw drop further than most? I, I, I love Aretha. I'll, I'll always be in awe of of her vocal ability uh she's just she's just a one-off you know there's nobody like her and there's nobody that can touch her and there's no i don't hear anybody new that's going anywhere near what she did uh, but donny hathaway is my number one as well absolutely he's um donny to, to me he sounds like every note that he sings it sounds like his life depends on it that he reaches very deep i think donny and uh, Arif, of course, uh, produced uh, some Donny Hathaway oh, stuff. Oh, God, as, uh, yeah, that live album that he and Wexler did, is that's the template for... You're talking about the Troubadour? Yeah. yeah the What's Going On, the Marvin yeah, Gaye? Yeah, uh, Jealous Guy. Oh, phenomenal record. And, f- and, and, and uh, if anyone ever says, well, what is it about Donny Hathaway and why do people like you admire him so much i think you perhaps should listen to the live album yeah because yeah. uh there were no, you know there were no gimmicks that was his voice oh yeah and boy oh boy what a singer astonishing astonishing and and uh yeah it's still my kind of that's the one you know Cause only the 
What's going on? Robbie Vincent Jazz Travels, the wonderful Donny Hathaway, his version of What's Going On, produced by Arif Marden, recorded live at the Troubadour in Los Angeles. My guest is Hamish Stewart, late of the Average White Band, and he is a man of festivals. Well, he's not exactly Woodstock, is it, Hamish? <laughs> That's a, that's a, an, an accident, one of those happy accidents. You know, we, my, me and my partner, Claire, decided to go into the pub business. We got a pub and uh, had a big garden. And a couple of months into it, we realised that we had a licence to have music and 500 people in the garden. So we went, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's have some of the guys down to play. And Jim Mullen came down, and I played with my band. And we invited uh, Graham Lyle came down, and I'd use use my band would be the house band. So we'd have guest singers like Pete Cox from Go West came down and sing the first time. And it was um, it was a little thing that that took off very quickly. This is our fifth year this year, and we've had a lot of great people. Leanne Carroll's doing it again this year, and uh, Omar, and, and it goes. Cr- uh, Roland Gifts coming down. Um, Why? Because uh, I persuade them to. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, 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 there's something I use the word cuddly. There's something cuddly about an event like that, isn't it? And nobody's got to prove anything. It just sounds nice. Well, hope. I think that's the the kind of the sort of ethos of it is that it's just come and come and enjoy yourself, you know, and and that's generally what happens uh, with with having a the house band kind of thing and maybe a couple of floating players here and there. Uh, you wind up with people maybe doing two or three gigs in the afternoon because somebody wants to play with somebody else, you know, and Robbie McIntosh from. Uh, from the Pretenders who I worked with with Paul McCartney, he'll come down, he'll bring some guys, and Robbie will sit in with the house band, and and it, it's it's a it's a it's really a music friendly and musician friendly event, and people can come and hang out, go and have something to eat. We we, we do great food. We make sure that everybody's well taken care of, and it's a it's a real comfortable little event. Are you right? worried it might get too big? Well, we were going to go a little bigger this year, but we decided not to because it was too, you know, it's just too much, too much to do. There's too much other stuff going on in, in, in our lives right now. So what we did, being a recession and all that, we downsized slightly. <laughs> Very sensible. <laughs> and it's the more festival, isn't it? Yeah, more music, we call it, with a small M and a big O. Because it's the first pub, the Three Mariners, was in a little village called Or O A R E, just outside Faversham. But this year we're doing it in the other pub, uh, the Anchor, which is in in Faversham itself, down by the creek. If you fancy that, uh, Hamish's festival in the wilds of Kent is his coming Saturday. We're back in a moment with Dave Sanborn doing Al Green. See if you recognise the voice. Jazz Travels on Jazz FM in partnership with Virgin Holidays Cruises. Start your cruise holiday with style in our exclusive V-Room Airport lounges in Gatwick and Manchester. Jazz FM. With the latest traffic and travel news when you need it, seven days a week. I'm Simon Tenby with the latest Jazz FM traffic and travel. The London band side of the M4 through Berkshire. An accident is causing delays at the moment. Several vehicles were involved in that. From Junction 5 at Langley through to 4B at the M25. All the lanes are now open, but it's taking 20 minutes to get through with the queues back to Junction 6 at Slough and Windsor. The M62 east on Merseyside is queuing from Junction 7 at Rainhill Stoops to 8 at Burtonwood Road. Lane 3 was closed until around 5 to 6 because of an accident. 
west on the M67, a lane's closed because of a broken down vehicle from Denton at Junction 1 through to Denton Island at the M60's Junction 24. It's taking around 15 minutes longer than usual to get through there tonight. If you spot any problems, call in if it's safe and legal for you to do so. 0500 59 27 27. Jazz FM. Listening colour. Hello, Brian Davies' phone. Sergey, Brian have talking phone. Hello, Brian's phone. Alexander Orlov here. I'm ring to congratulate Brian on choose rock and roll the silly toy after he renew his semi-detached mansion insurance to compare the market.com. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Orlov. I'll pass your message on. Oh, Sergey, where can I get one of these talking telephone, my bobs? To collect more exclusive Mirka toys, buy your car or home insurance or get credit card to compare the market.com. Simples. Jazz FM. Jazz FM presents our summer wine choice with Waitrose Wine Direct. Here's Ann Jones, wine expert from the Waitrose Wine Buying Team. This week I'm going to talk to you about Bordeaux, one of my absolute favourite areas for classic red wines, and the Chateau Tour Chapeau in particular. Bordeaux offers a wonderful variety of wine styles. And this is a great example of the youthful, approachable style that's such a great match for relaxed dinners and summer barbecues. It's the traditional blend of Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc. This gives the wine its charming style and lovely, subtle, oaky flavour. Just sip it and you'll create all those wonderful, summery taste memories of blackberry hedgerows and ripe, brambly, juicy fruit. Exclusive to Waitrose in the UK, Chateau Tour Chapeau has great heritage. It is owned by a domain that was established in the 13th century by the Chevalier of Saint-Jean de Jerusalem. The grapes harvested there today are grown on land that has been farmed as vineyards for hundreds of years. So why not visit us at Waitrose and find out more about our historic Chateau Tour Chapeau? Cheers. Find out more about summer wines at Waitrose at jazzfm.com. And don't miss your chance to save 25% off an exclusive case of wines created just for you by Waitrose Wine Direct. Your summer wines, chosen especially for you by Waitrose Wine Direct and Jazz FM. Enjoy your wine choices responsibly this summer. Now and again, a bit of experience comes in handy. Like when you're hand-making sofas to order. At DFS, that's what we've been doing for 43 years. So when you order a handmade sofa from us, you know you'll get exactly what you want. Come and see for yourself. With at least £500 off our new style collection and four years interest-free credit, we think you'll enjoy the experience. DFS. Making every day more comfortable. Not percent APR representative.
Robbie Vincent, Jazz Travels, David Sanborn with Al Green's Love and Happiness. And that comes from the album Straight to the Heart. Our guest, Hamish Stewart. We have David Sanborn and it's your vocals on Love and Happiness. Yeah. Uh, how did that come about? Well, David called me up. Uh, kind of out the blue, I'd, well, I'd worked with him a little before. I'd done some some backgrounds on on a couple of his albums, and uh, we'd we'd been friends for a long a long time, really. Um, and he said, "Look, I'm doing this live record. We're going to go out on the road. We're going to do a few shows, and then we're going to do the record live at uh, SIR in New York." 40, uh, 52nd Street. Um, this is the band. Great. Okay. Well, and, we, and then we got out there and we decided what we were going to do. We didn't know what songs we were going to do. We thought about maybe held it through the grapevine. There was another Al, Gre- Al Green song that we talked about, but we just we went for that one, and that was what survived. It was the strangest gig I ever did, but it was great. You know, you come on in the middle of the show, do one song, and you. Okay, I gotta go now. <laughs> Just getting getting warmed up when you have to leave the stage. I was just, guess things are strange like that. I've well, done a few since then, but uh, what about Atlantic Star? Again, they were hugely successful. You had a big, big track with them, didn't you? Yeah, it was a, it's a funny, a funny story with that. Uh, there's a there's a young record exec who really started that. Label Interscope after he left A and M, guy called John McLean. Um, he was a great character and really a, a big music fan. And he he lo- he heard the song and he loved it. And <laughs> I had I think it was about the fifth single. They would the record was going ballistic, you know. But um, it it got to number two on the R and B charts, and it was ju- and it was just starting to do some get some pop action and the la- the the band left the label that week and A&M just dropped the record like a hot potato so that was it it's like just a uh, nearly number one record <laughs> You haven't told us what it was called. It was called If Your Heart Isn't In It. Well, shall I play that one for you as well? Yeah, why not? Yeah. It's a fragile situation It could fall apart at any time And none would be the wiser Except you and I
Jazz FM, Robbie Vincent with Jazz Travels, if your heart isn't in it. And on the original demo, I think you had Sanborn on it, didn't you? Yeah, David, uh, David and Anthony Jackson, Steve Ferroni played on it, and, and the Breckers played as well. It was uh, just, just like somebody come in and help me with these demos. I had some time at Atlantic, and the guys all came in. It was great. Well, were you, uh, you were living in America, and this is how you were able to continue to do all this sort of work? Uh, yeah, I was living in... Well, I lived in America for a long time. It's only really the 90s I came back. When I started working with Paul McCartney, I, I, I was back here more more time than I was spending in America and just wound up back here. Do you, bring you right up to date and coming back from America and moving back to the UK, do you still enjoy playing music? Uh, does it give you as a bigger thrill as it did in those very early young days? <laughs> Probably more more now than than then it's just different now i i I know more and i i I feel um i've explored a lot more and i probably learned more in the last 10 years than i did in the 20 years previous to that just um working with really good musicians here you know like four or five different keyboard players over time and uh, and guys like jim mullen and, and it all just uh enriches the the whole the whole thing is there any style of music that you feel you couldn't play or would you regard almost being asked to do almost anything as a refreshing challenge well i know i can't play classical music because uh, i don't have the the chops and I, I i can't i've all the theory that i learned when i was a kid the three grades of piano that i did is long forgotten it's way back in the dim recesses I, I try to learn more about harmony and and stuff like that and interesting chords and uh, that, that's what really interests me any any music that has interest in harmony i guess now <clears throat> one of the advantages i think of being a, there's lots of disadvantages of being a musician but i've always felt that one of the advantages is that musicians lead a, a sort of fairly natural gypsy life in travel means you probably as a musician as a profession travel more than most yeah. uh, what about kent would you w- would you encourage people to visit some of the pretty parts of kent absolutely i i I think it's um, it's a much kind of overlooked area. I guess uh, I, my my theory is that it was too close to two world wars. It was the front line, really, basically, of World War Two, and I, I think um, people kind of tended to go to the other side of London. The West Country is really beautiful, but Kent is 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 gorgeous. It's a lovely county, beautiful in springtime. It's amazing when the orchards and the the hop the hop fields are in bloom and all of that and um it's just it's great i love it and farmers get gray hairs when the parakeets turn up on mass and uh, (laughs) it's not such a not such a happy time where where in kent if you uh somebody had limited time a friend came over from america let's say and they had limited time where would you send them in kent i mean everyone goes to dover don't they because historically uh that's probably where you would go but where else would you send somebody well, the, yeah, the cliffs is a big attraction, isn't it, really? But uh, there's lots of great little places. Well, the whole sort of north part, like where Faversham and Whitstable and, and all that is, Canterbury is amazing. You know, the old old parts of Canterbury, the the walled the walled part of it, and and then there's so many there's so many villages and little hamlets that you just happen across driving about to get to somewhere. Uh, uh, it's just drive around, you know. Robbie Vincent, Jazz Travels. Now, we've heard Pick Up the Pieces as a hit single. We've heard it live at the Montreux Jazz Festival. What about Pick Up the Pieces Cuban Jazz Combo style? You'll be hearing it in just a moment, and it's great. Jazz Travels on Jazz FM, in partnership with Virgin Holidays Cruises. Skip the queues when you embark with our dedicated check-in and our VIP lounge. Just another way Rockstar Service gives you more. Jazz FM. With the latest traffic and travel news when you need it, seven days a week. 
I'm Simon Tenby with the latest Jazz FM traffic and travel. The London-bound side of the M4 through Berkshire. An accident is causing delays at the moment. Several vehicles were involved in that. From Junction 5 at Langley through to 4B at the M25. All the lanes are now open, but it's taking 20 minutes to get through with the queues back to Junction 6 at Slough and Windsor. The M62 east on Merseyside is queuing from Junction 7 at Rainhill Stoops to 8 at Burtonwood Road. Lane 3 was closed until around 5 to 6 because of an accident. West on the M67, a lane's closed because of a broken down vehicle from Denton at Junction 1 through to Denton Island at the M60's Junction 24. It's taking around 15 minutes longer than usual to get through there tonight. Any problems, call in if it's safe and legal for you to do so. 0500 59 27 27. Jazz FM's Listening Colour. Hello? This is Alexander Orlov. I would like to speak with your papa to congratulate him on choose his second toy after he renew his people's career insurance through comparethemarket.com. Dad, there's a meerkat on the phone. Give me the phone. What are you doing? Oh, Sergey, the chicka little puppy hung up on me. No respect. To collect more exclusive Mirka toys, buy your car or home insurance or get credit card, so compare the market.com. Simples. Jazz FM. Jazz FM. This is Chris Phillips, and this week on the Jazz Breakfast, you can win a holiday to the mystical land of Jordan. It's the home of Wadi Rum, the legendary desert setting for the movie Lawrence of Arabia, which celebrates his 50th birthday this year. Jordan is also where you'll find the beautiful Red Rose City of Petra, built into the walls with its famous treasury. Just listen to the Jazz Breakfast with Chris Phillips all this week, from 6 until 10, to find out more. And enter to win a luxury, all-expenses-paid holiday to Jordan for two. All the details can be found at jazzfm.com whenever you want. Visit Jordan, taking you beyond with Jazz FM. When Laszlo Biro wanted something better to write with, he didn't redesign the fountain pen. He started from scratch. He thought about the purpose of writing and designed a pen easy to use. We used a similar philosophy when designing the new Audi A3. Instead of a manual handbrake, there's an electromechanical one activated by a single button. And like Biro's ballpoint pen, it does everything the original did, just better. The new Audi A3 arrives this weekend. Contact your local Audi centre to arrange a test drive, or come in and see it yourself. The all-new Audi A3. Everything you need, nothing you don't. Vorsprung durch Technik. This is Jules Holland, and I'm proud to be patron of music at Boysdale Canary Wharf, the latest wonderful live music venue in London. Check out our website for the forthcoming live jazz, blues and soul, which we'll be having on. Enjoy a fantastic meal in our gorgeous restaurant. Our Michelin-star trained head chef, Andy Rose, has created a menu using the very best of British ingredients, with two course menus starting at 1975, as well as a great bar menu with fabulous burgers. Or try out the caviar and oyster bar. Plus, there's live jazz. Jazz, blues and soul every night. Boysdale of Canary Wharf. Book tickets from just £5 online at boysdale.co.uk. Tens of thousands of people across the UK have trusted PPI Claim Back to win back millions of pounds in missold PPI. You may be owed thousands of pounds, but feel you haven't the time or the confidence to handle the claim yourself. And that's where we come in. We make the process as easy as possible, and we'll fight to win back every penny you deserve. One simple text is all it takes to start the process. So don't delay. Text PPI to 87085. That's text PPI to 87085.
Robbie Vincent Jazz Travels, pick up the pieces, Cuban jazz combo style. I told you it was good. Now, you heard Hamish talking about his adopted county of Kent, and I thought we ought to find out just a little bit more, and I thought we'd start off with vineyards. So I invited Fraser Thompson in to join us. He's managing director of the vineyard at Chapel Down in Tenterden in Kent, uh, but it's not just wine, you know. You claim to have the best beer in the world, don't you, Fraser? Well, uh, th- that's what we're saying. It's it's one of only 30 uh, beers in the world that won a gold medal at the International Beer Challenge and one of only three lagers. And there's two lagers that, uh, that, are, that are black lagers, so I don't really count that as lager. I think lager should be yellow uh, <laughs> and cold. And uh, and officially, therefore, Curious Brew is, uh, is in my opinion, the, the greatest lager in the world. It is different. It's uh, it's a really interesting beer. OK, well, I, I when I go through the wine fields of South Africa, uh, in France, through Bordeaux, and have masters of wine talking to me about wine, uh, the one thing in common is they always talk about the variety of grapevine. They talk yeah. about the soil and how you match the uh, variety with the weather, with the soil, and so on. Um, is that exactly the same in Kent? Yes, it's exactly the same. The um, uh, the French have this wonderful word for it, which is terroir, uh, and terroir basically is uh, is an idea of place, a sense of place. So it's uh, it's the aspect of the land, it's the soil type that sits underneath the land, and the protection from the weather, the flora and fauna. That, that surround it. That's crucially important for the types of vines that you're able to grow. And in England, believe it or not, we are blessed with uh, the almost perfect terroir to make sparkling wine. Uh, because what's the first thing you see? What's the first thing most people see when they come into Kent uh, is the white cliffs of Dover. That's chalk. And chalk is manna for a winemaker who wants to make sparkling wine. It is, of course, chalk that makes champagne so special. Uh, most of France, in fact, is limestone. But in the northwest of France, uh, just north of Paris and slightly to the east of Paris, sorry, is, um, is the Champagne region. And that's typified by chalk hills. They generally run, it's the same chalk, exactly the same chalk as we get in the north and south downs of Kent. Now, what's happened is, uh, so we have the perfect chalk, we have beautiful aspects, so we have the north and south downs. Uh, And what's happened is there's been a little bit of global warming, we think. And a degree of global warming will move the growing envelope of those grapes around about 270 kilometres north, which makes where I sit in Tenterden around about somewhere somewhere just south of Epinay, the middle of the Champagne region of France. So it's perfect terroir, and that's exactly what great winemakers are looking for. You're looking for the slope and the chalk, and we're now planting those great noble varieties that go to make Champagne. What about the actual manufacture, and by that I mean the way it's stored? Well, a technique of making uh, sparkling wine is uh, you you can do a number of ways of making uh, a wine bring effervescence to wine. Uh, The method that uh, was created uh, in part in England, funnily enough, uh, but in Champagne is known as the method Champenoise, is the fermentation in bottle. That's a traditional technique for making sparkling wine in the bottle. And that's a technique that we do exactly the same as they do in Champagne, which is not the same, by the way, as Carver and Prosecco. So it's the most expensive way of, of fermenting in a bottle. Robbie Vincent, Jazz Travels. My guest is the managing director of the Chapel Down Wine region of Kent. Bottles of Kent, then, are all over the world now. Well, we're, we're very proud. We proudly put on every bottle that we send out tented in England on the bottom in a little sort of red band beneath this black label. Uh, uh, and actually, people come back. It, it sounds curiously English. Uh, and, you know, you hear that word in you know, in, in Arabic or in Chinese when we go and export the, the, the wines. And it sounds peculiarly English. There's a lovely bounce to tenter den. And everybody can say it. It's, it's a great benefit. Okay. I know you've got a restaurant, uh, and I know that uh, we can have a tour of your wine field. So let's assume we've done that. You've taken us round, and and we've had lunch, and you've shown us the wine fields and what you do. And then I say, well, that's I have a lovely day, but what shall I do tomorrow? Let me make you the unofficial tourist officer for Kent. Where where would you send us other than apple picking and hot picking? I'm extremely lucky. Not only do I run a vineyard, but I I live at Sissinghurst Castle, which is uh, the National Trust's jewel, really, in the south 
southeast. It's the garden that was created by Vita Sackville West out of a ruin. Uh, it's probably the most famous garden in the world, actually. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a mere eight miles from the, uh, from the vineyard. So if, you, if you're interested in gardening, you want to see something stunning and spectacular that will inspire and lift your heart, then uh, Sissinghurst Gardens is just one of, the, one of the jewels. Leeds Castle, I'm sure you've all seen the stuff about Leeds Castle. There, there are dozens of castles all over Kent, dozens of beautiful properties. So if you wanted to... The classic English view from Chartwell at the Winston Chir- that inspired Winston Churchill to defend this country, that's in Kent. Can I just second that? I think Chartwell is just wonderful. And don't miss, for goodness sake, the visitor's book. Wasn't Churchill lucky? He didn't go to the world, the world came to him. It is stunning. Everyone from Eisenhower to royalty, it just goes on and on and on. I, th- I think if you stand at the edge of Chartwell Gardens and you look out over the weald and you think, yeah, that's, that's what I'm fighting for. That's, that's chocolate box England. Uh, and it really is one of the most stunning parts. And, and it just staggers me that people don't stop. And it's right on London's doorstep. You can be in the middle of Kent within an hour. We've got Michelin-styled restaurants. There are great pubs. There's hundreds of things to do. I mean, there's, uh, apart from the coastline, which is stunning, you know, you've got uh, from the, the wilderness of Dungeness, which is this, uh, this staggering, uh, bleak landscape so characterised by Derek Jarman's garden. Uh, and then you move up the coast towards Sandwich and Deal. You've got the great golf courses of, uh, of Sandwich and, and around Deal. You go up round into the Isle of Thanet. You've got uh, resurgent Margate with the uh, the Turner Contemporary Museum there. So that's a great day out if you're if you're interested in modern art. And Tracy Emmons got a retrospective there. It's just a fantastic, really interesting place to go now. It's not quite as grim as it used to be. I can promise you. Uh, so uh, so the coast itself, and then moving inland, it just becomes just more and more glorious. Bring your bicycle. I cycle around. Uh, uh, the, the parts of Kent from the, the classic sort of Pluckley area, the most haunted village in, in in the UK, where you know mom and pop Larkins could well be there saying perfect, surrounded by hop fields and cherry trees. Uh, so I mean the county's got it all as as well as Canterbury Cathedral, so it, it and Tunbridge Wells. So it, it it's just a beautiful place, and I'm just staggered there aren't more people coming. Our thanks to Fraser from Chapel Down and all that nice wine and all that nice beer too in Tenterden. Right, here's a track from our guest next week.
That's E Funk from Roy Ayers. Don't miss him. He's our guest on Jazz Travels next week. After the news, dinner jazz with.